Rockstar. My name is Nicole Crocky and welcome to this Good News Early webinar. There are many different marketing strategies available today to help home service contractors grow their businesses. Today's topic focuses on tripling your sales through internet marketing. Plumbing and HVAC SEO was founded 15 years ago to help plumbing and HVAC contractors grow their businesses by gaining top placement on search engines like Google and Bing, where customers were searching for their services. Today, Plumbing and HVAC SEO has grown its Miami-based team to over 35 employees. Through years of continuous training, reading, and trial and error, the company has developed a proven system that has consistently worked to get its clients to the top of the search engines. Our guest today is Josh Nelson, founder and CEO of Plumbing and HVAC SEO, and author of The Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Plumbing Contractors. Josh is one of the most sought after experts in internet marketing and SEO. He is known for helping plumbing, HVAC, and electric electrical contractors increase their sales and grow their revenue by more effectively marketing online. He has had the opportunity to work with hundreds of contractors across the United States, helping them go from virtually no presence online to the point where they now dominate the search engines in their market and receive hundreds of calls each month directly via the web. I'm gonna turn it over to Josh, but before I do, don't forget to submit your questions via the Q&A feature for Josh to address after the presentation. Josh, please take it away. Excellent, thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really excited for today's session. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the accelerated growth model, which is really how you can triple your sales over the next 12 to 24 months uh, by getting your internet marketing right. Um, and this is something I'm really passionate about. We've got a, a short period here, about 20 minutes, where I'm going to give you my best ideas and strategies on how to generate more leads, more sales, keep the phones ringing and the trucks running. So if you're excited and you happen to be watching this live, give me a yes in the comments. Um, as Nicole mentioned, I'm the author of How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right. Um, but I'd say more important than that stuff is we have had the opportunity to work with hundreds of plumbing, HVAC, home service contractors. And so what I share isn't based on theory, it's based on real world experience working with plumbing, HVAC, electrical contractors, just like you. Um, and we've got a special place in our heart for Nexstar. We've been part of the Nexstar network for several years now. And I really believe you guys are the best of the best in the home services trade, like really the best companies, the most innovative marketing strategies. And so I'm honored and humbled to be able to be on here to share this with you guys today. Um, our company, Plumbing and HVAC SEO, is on a mission to help triple the sales of 1,000 plumbing, HVAC, and electrical contractors. And so I love sharing this information. I really think that's a big part of why I give this information and why I'm so excited about it. Um, there's a workbook to go along with this. If you happen to be following along or following after, you can access it at plumberseo.net slash workbook. It's just a Google Doc to help you kind of go through this in a checklist format and wait, walk away with really clear takeaways. So let's get right into it. I want to talk about the accelerated growth model. And I, you know, I think if you want to be in a state of constant acceleration where your lead sales and revenue are going up, there's really three things we have to solve for. Uh, three things I'll share my screen after this. But number one is we have to drive leads, right? We have to have a strategy to get those web submissions, to get those online bookings, to get those inbound calls that are happening on a consistent basis. Second to that, though, is we have to optimize for conversion. And a lot of times as we think about online marketing. Yes, we think about leads, SEO, pay-per-click, social media, email marketing, all of those fun topics. But if we can't convert the leads that we generate into sales, into book jobs, and convert the one-time customer into a repeat customer that refers us to others, we won't actually get the revenue growth that we're after. So really focusing on how well we convert the leads that we generate is mission critical. And then number three is we have to optimize our results, right? As Next star contractors, you guys are spending a lot of money in marketing. And there's so many different opportunities that you could be spending your money on. In order to optimize results, we really have to figure out what's working best. Where are we getting our best return on investment and shift our dollars and shift our effort into those areas? And what I found is if we can optimize these three things, lead generation, conversion, and optimization, there's no reason you can't triple your sales over the next 12 to 24 months and be in a constant state of momentum. So let's talk first a little bit about driving leads. Uh, there's really three channels when it comes to driving leads. The first is organic SEO. I'm gonna kind of shift into screen share mode because I don't want you guys to have to be looking at this 
from across the, the room should be seeing my screen now. So organic SEO is really making sure we're coming up in the non-paid listings where our customers are looking. Um, and we've got a lot of technical information about how to optimize your website, on-page, off-page, Google business profile, leveraging links and citations. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty today, but I do wanna kind of talk about some of the key things you can look at on your website to see, is it properly optimized? Uh, and again, in your workbook, I give you some more of these types of details. But a great example of this is one of the next door members we work with is the Meridian Company. And they're based in East Lansing, Michigan, full service, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, remodeling. Um, and over the years, we've done a lot of work to optimize their website and their web presence so they come up as the dominant company in that particular market. And if we could pull up their website and look at it. I could show you some of the key things we do. But what I want you to understand is that making sure you're coming up organically absolutely drives leads and is worth the effort. Uh, and so I'm just going to pull up their reporting. You can see this is the dashboard we tend to work off of um, with, our, with our partners. You can see how much they're spending, $8,000 per month. You can see how many leads they've generated, 417 during that period. You can see the average cost per lead of $19.32. Uh, and we can kind of see where these leads are coming from, like some from organic, some from pay-per-click, some from Google Maps, some from the forms that, that have been submitted. And really what I want you to see is a lion's share of these leads are actually coming from the organic side of the equation. It's almost 65% of those organic calls and those Google map calls. So yes, I really truly think it's important that you are coming up organically because that's the lowest cost, highest quality lead you can generate. Um, and so again, I, I was told not to get into the minutia today. Um, I've got deep dives trainings. If you wanna access it, feel free to reach out to me on exactly what we do on the website with the content, with the title tags, with the link building and citations to walk you through how that works. But we're really looking at the big picture model today. So that's number one, we wanna drive leads through organic, making sure we're coming up in the non-paid listings where your customers are looking. Now, number two is we wanna tap into paid search. We don't wanna just be focused on organic, right? Because there, there's, a, there's a maximum opportunity ceiling that you hit with organic and so leveraging paid channels like Google local service ads, like Google um, Google ads, gives you a knob that you can turn as you look to grow, as you look to scale. And so I want to pull up this visual for you because this is how I think about how you layer paid search into your strategy for your plumbing HVAC home service company. Uh, organic is the foundation, right? Making sure we're coming up on Google, making sure that we're coming up in the non-paid listings don't ignore that and go straight to paid search. I think a lot of contractors just do paid search first and they're like, man, it's hard to monetize this. It's hard to get a return on investment. Well, if you don't have a strong foundation, the, the effectiveness of your paid advertising is diminished. Uh, so once you've got that dialed in, the, the, the first thing you want to focus on from a paid search perspective is Google ads, right? Because it's very directional. People are looking for a plumber, for an AC contractor, for a technician in their particular market. Uh, but in tandem to that, I also think local service ads, you want to be participating in that. Um, when I'm asked, you know, where do I go first? What do I focus on first? I would make sure that your Google guaranteed local service ad stuff is squared away. Make sure that you've opened that budget as wide as you can because the average cost per lead is actually less on local service ads right now than it is on pay-per-click in most markets. Um, so double down on that and then spend the rest on, on actual Google ads, assuming you've got a scalable budget, and we're gonna talk about how much to spend and where to spend it. So that's kind of the foundation. Kind of moving up from there, you've got paid directories and, and paper leads. So pay, paid directories would be Angie, Nextdoor, Yelp, like you can pay and advertise in those places. In certain markets, there are pockets where those directories actually come up before the organic, like the, the other actual plumbing, HVAC, electrical contractors. And so in, in certain markets, it just makes sense to pay to advertise and pay to be in those directories. Um, I'm not a big fan of the paper lead services like Nextstar and kind of how the Angie market has moved. But it's nice to have that in case your lead flow is, is low for some reason. You need, a, you need a source that you can turn on. There are tons of leads that you can tap into. And with automation, which we'll talk about in a minute, 
Um, you can actually monetize those leads and it can blend into the result. Now, at the very top of the paid advertising hierarchy, in my mind, for home services, we've got social advertising, which would be like Facebook ads, TikTok, YouTube. There's a place for it. There's lots of opportunity to laser target your ideal customer, right? Somebody that's a homeowner that has a certain income threshold that is in your local area, but it's a branding play, right? And so if you haven't already really maximized your paid search and your organic strategy, I don't think that's the place to start. But as you go north of $10 million per year, which I know a lot of you guys are, and you're already spending in radio ads, in billboard ads, in brand advertising, there's a great play to tap into social media to get in front of your ideal customers, to create that demand, to create that awareness, which has a synergistic effect on all the other advertising that you do. Uh, now, regardless of how, how deep you are with your paid advertising, I definitely think you should be running retargeting and you need to have automation in place as you start to leverage paid advertising. So that's what I've got over here on the side. Retargeting is just dropping a pixel so that anybody that gets to your website can be advertised to specifically over the next 30, 60, 90, 180 days. And so what we recommend is have that pixel. So if they got to your website from organic or they got to it from paid, not everybody converts. We'll see in, in the best cases, which I'll show you here in a minute, you're going to convert at like 40 to 50% visitor to lead. So the other 50% were on your website. They were interested in your services. They just didn't submit the, the form or they didn't pick up and dial your office. We want to remain top of mind with them while they're still in that buying phase. And so that's where retargeting comes into play. We can have banner ads that are showing to them. We can show up in their social media feed drawing them back to our website. We know that we're twice as likely to convert the lead if we can get them back to the website a second time. Uh, and then the other piece is, is automation, right? If we're not leveraging two-way text messaging and automation to follow up with the leads we generate from paid advertising, our return on investment isn't gonna be where, where it should be, right? Because, you know, let's face it, we're, if we're doing local service ads, we're paying $35, $40 per lead. If we're doing pay-per-click, maybe we're paying $75, $80 per lead. We need to make sure that as high a percentage of those convert from a lead into a book job as possible. And so I'll be talking about how we leverage automation, but I would encourage you, if you're spending even a couple thousand dollars a month in paid advertising, you should be leveraging automation to convert your leads at the highest level possible. And so as I talk with Nextstar Contractors, you guys have been through the ringer with paid advertising, right? You've tried some Facebook stuff. You've spent a lot of money in Google ads over the years. You've tinkered with local service ads. And, and a lot, unfortunately, a lot of you have had a, a failed experience. So you didn't get a great return on investment. Uh, I do want to encourage you when you do paid advertising right, um, it can have a great return on investment. You know, And a lot of times it, it's just a, the, the person that set it up whether it was a really large contractor that just looks at plumbing and HVAC is like, hey, you know, if they typed in plumber or plumbing, it's all the same. They don't understand the nuance of getting granular. If they typed in drain cleaning or indoor air quality or trench sewer replacement, somebody that types those terms is looking for something very specific. And so we want a different ad group for that. We want a different landing page for that. We want a different call to action for that. And when we do, we can get higher relevancy, lower cost per lead, and, and a better conversion from those leads into, into sales. And so without getting into the weeds, hopefully that makes sense. Give me a yes in the comments if you're tracking along with me. I'm trying to get through this in rapid fire, but hopefully this is, this is making sense. The other big thing that I think you want to pay attention to when it comes to your paid advertising, especially with Google Ads, is you don't want to drive someone that clicked on your Google ad directly to your homepage. And you might have a beautiful website that's got amazing content that talks about your testimonials and everything else. What we wanna do when somebody's clicking on a Google ad and we're paying 10, 15, $20 for that click, we wanna make sure that we're taking all the distractions away. We're giving them one specific thing to do. And so, you know, just as an example here, this is a, a website for DeVacy. Um, that's the site. When we drive paid traffic, it's a much different page. It's more streamlined. It's more simplified. It's got one call to action and the opportunity, obviously, to call or book online or schedule, but it's very linear. We don't want to detract them and take them off. We found that can have a double or triple impact on the conversion from a click 
to an actual lead, right? And we definitely want to make sure we're pixeling those people as well. So just as an example, one of the, the next door members we work with is, is Cardinal Home Services. You can see here about $10,000 spent in Google ads specifically, 220 leads generated. That's about a $40 average cost per lead, which is very manageable in their market. Um, and you know, just back of the envelope, you know, math here, 224 leads with a 40% conversion rate would be 90 book jobs, average ticket 750. And I know you guys have a higher average ticket than this, um, $67,000 in revenue. That's a seven and a half times return on investment. And so like the key things I'm talking about here with the landing page, with the ad groups can make a big impact on how well you convert those visitors into leads. Um, and that's a big part of the equation. And so when it comes to driving leads, we've got organic, making sure we're coming up for all of the keywords in the non-paid. We've got paid, which is Google ads, local service ads, remarketing, and even social media ads at the very top. But third is database marketing. And I think this is probably the biggest opportunity for most of you next door uh, contractors is you've got customers that you've done business with in the past. You've also got prospects that have gotten to your site, inquired, but didn't convert. And so I want to ask, like, what are you doing to get back in front of those, those customers? Are you doing database reactivation? Are you dropping a newsletter on them on a consistent basis? Because this actually, I said organic is lowest cost. The very lowest cost lead you can generate is to resell the existing customer. And so just make sure we're doing something active to engage with those past customers, with those past leads. Um, and so th what we found, the, the best thing you can do for database marketing, those past customers, those past people that, that inquired is two-way text message. Yes, you can email them and you should. Yes, you should have a newsletter that you send out and that's great. We find that most people don't engage because there's so much spam going out on email these days um, and it doesn't really get their attention. However, with two-way text message, sending them an offer and two offers we found work really well is like a, a very specific we're going to be in your area. We've got technicians. We want to drop in. It's just do a quick evaluation of your home. That gets a lot of response, but then also like having a specific offer based on the seasonality. So just as an example, hey, John, this is Alice with Bob's HVAC. We're in the fall here. Wanted to be sure your home is protected from the cold. As your trusted HVAC protect professionals, we're running a limited offer, $500 off a new HV install. Simply reply yes, right? And most people don't respond at all. They ignore it. Some people write, don't ever text me again. But a lot of people do write yes, right? And you can put automation in place when they write yes. Great. Here's a link to schedule and to claim your coupon. You might think that would not work. But I can tell you now, working with hundreds of contractors, making the message as simple as possible, this works extremely well. So just as an example here, 72 degrees, one of the clients we work with, um, had a past prospect list of about 5,000. We sent that very simple message out, 300 replies, 19 book jobs, 24 jobs completed, over $84,000 in revenue. And that's just by marketing without spending a dollar to the existing database of people that happen to be sitting in Service Titan or House Call Pro or whatever system you have and getting it into a two-way text message exchange. And so I, I really think this is low-hanging opportunity because if we're marketing correctly, we're getting new customers, we're getting new leads. And if we're consistently doing marketing to our existing database, we can generate a whole additional stream of revenue that we might not have even considered. And so I'd love to have you just rate yourself real quick on this red, yellow, green. Where's the opportunity for you just mentally or if you have the workbook open? You know, is it the organic side? Are you not coming up where you should? Is it paid search? Are you not spending enough? Or have you kind of given up on that as a channel to continue to scale? Um, or are, are we not doing database marketing? Are we not two-way text messaging, messaging with our prospects? If so, that might be the big opportunity. Main thing I want to make sure you're clear on, though, is there are opportunities to generate more leads. What's the one or two things you can implement right away on this particular front? Okay, shifting gears now to maximize conversion. Like I said, we want to drive leads, but if we can't convert those leads into book jobs and we can't convert a one-time customer into a repeat customer, um, we're not going to get the outcomes that we should. So this is all like, what do we do to maximize conversion? The first thing you have to focus on to maximize your conversion is make sure that your website is built to convert. Because what we know is most of the people that get to your website, they either saw an ad, they saw your van, they heard your ad, and before they convert, they're going to go to your website and they're going to look real quick. And if your website isn't built to convert, you're, gonna, you're not going to get the outcomes that you should. 
And so we've got a great checklist in your workbook that walks you through the key things you can do to make sure your website converts at the highest level possible. Uh, for the sake of um, speed, I'm not going to read these bullets, but you know, there's very specific things you can do. A couple of very basic things. Authenticity and personality goes a long way. On your website, pull it up right now, and I want you to see, is it stock imagery, or are we seeing you, your team, the authentic organization behind the company? That one little element we found has a big impact on how well your website converts. Um, so a good example of this is the Meridian Advantage. I'm just going to pull up their website real quick. Um, and so this is a Nextstar member that we work with. We've had the opportunity to part with them for several years now. And you can see this website's built to convert. Phone number in the top right-hand corner, ability to schedule online, multimedia with personality. We're like, we're seeing this is a real company we might want to do business with. It's talking about specifically why somebody would want to choose them versus the competition. Um, and it fills in all of the gaps along with social proof and everything in between. And so I'd love for you to compare your site through this and the checklist that I've provided, because when your website is built to convert everything you do, your SEO, your pay-per-click, your social media generates a better return on investment. You get more leads for the same dollar, and ultimately that's going to drive more sales and more revenue growth. So just as an example, like looking at the data here, um, this is Meridian $7,000 spend, 677 leads. That's an $11.65 average cost per lead. And like we're maniacal about tracking how many people get into the website and how many of those leads or those visitors are turning into leads, whether that's a phone call, an online book job, or, or an actual chat through the website. And you can see here we're tracking about a 32% conversion from visitor to lead. And that's what we're shooting for. You know, most home service sites, you know, if you really look at it, it's somewhere between 10 and 15%. If you make the tweaks I'm talking about here, where you're talking to the avatar and you've got that personality and authenticity and you give them multiple ways to convert, you know, you're going to get north of 30%. And that's where you start to get great return on investment. Uh, another example of a company we work with is Valley Plumbing. I'm just going to like, just real quick, so you can kind of connect the dots, right? Phone number in the top right-hand corner, personality and authenticity. This goes a long way. These are the actual guys. Branded trucks look super professional. Ability to engage via chat. Ability to book directly online, which is a big conversion factor. If you've got Service Titan, if you've got House Call Pro, give them the opportunity to book online, to take that off their plate, right? Don't just force the phone call. Uh, so in this case, $9,000 spent, 510, 510 leads, average of $18.18 .18 per lead. And then if we get into it, you can see their 35% conversion from visitor to lead. Again, don't want to beat a dead horse, but I just want to show you a couple of examples here uh, this is Nick's Go Plumbing, 5,879, 535 leads, $10.99 average cost per lead, 38% conversion rate. Um, Cliff Notes, real authentic imagery. There's, there's Jeff, owner of Nick's Go Plumbing, right? Multimedia, if you can get some video baked into the website, that goes a long way. Show your social proof. Give them the ability not just to call, but to also submit online, to book online to chat with you via the website. Make it really easy for them to convert in the way that they want to convert in that particular moment. All right, next in terms of conversion is your reputation, right? There's two things they're going to do before they, they convert in most cases, right? They're going to see your ad or be exposed to your value. They're going to want to check out your website real quick. And what do you think they're going to do before they actually call? Typically, they're going to look your company up and the word reviews. And they're going to see what reviews do they have on Google? What is the general sentiment in the marketplace? And if you don't have a four-star higher review rating and you don't have at least you know, 50 to 100 plus reviews, that negatively impacts the conversion, right? They're going to be like, nope, I'm going to somebody else, right? So we want to really be conscious of what our reputation is and how we're looking in the marketplace. The best tip I can say to help you really drive more reviews is to automate the review request process. If you're using service type, which I know next to our, most next to our members are, um, set it up so that after the job is done, there's an automation that fires, ideally via text message um, and via email, but automate it so your technicians don't have to check in somewhere. There's no like email manual process. The job is completed. Review request goes out. Have a little bit of a nurture sequence. Say, hey, you hadn't clicked the link yet. We'd love it if you'd write us a review. For the clients we implement that automation for, their review count skyrockets. And that increase in reviews helps to convert better, it helps the website rank better, and it drives a lot of the results and a lot of the outcome. 
So a good example of this, one of the next door members we work with is Plumbing Nerds in Bonita Springs. They are spending about $21,000 in marketing, 880 leads tracked, $25.30 per lead. You can see across a variety of channels. But I think one of the reasons this works so well for them is that they've generated thousands of reviews for their company. Thought I had a screen. Okay, there it is. You can see here, uh, 1,200 in Naples, 1,500 in, in Bonita Springs. Those reviews drive rankings. Those reviews drive conversions. Having that automation and, and really creating a great culture and a great experience makes that a reality. Okay, last thing on conversion. I think this is the biggest opportunity for most of us is you have to be leveraging automation. Like in today's market, automation exists where when someone calls in, we can automate a text message to them. When they submit the form, we can be following up in multiple ways very, very quickly. Um, there's plenty of ways to get leads. Like I talked about SEO, Google Maps, local SEO, your own brand advertising. What we find is 50 to 60% of leads come in and don't convert. And 90% of the forms that get submitted don't convert because no one's following up. Really, the big problem is your leads need to be followed up with in 15 minutes or less. And they need to be touched five to seven times before they book. So you need speed to lead and you need to be leveraging text messaging your customer today. Let's face it. If they, if they have the choice to call you or text message with you, think about if you have the opportunity, somebody's calling you, you're like, man, can I just text them back and get this done? That's what your customer wants. You need to make sure you have that in place. This automation exists, right? Um, where when someone submits the form, you're following up via phone, email, and SMS in two minutes or less. And if they don't book, you're dropping follow-up messages at least five times. Um, again, I could spend an hour on this particular topic, I'll just say that the platform we use and implement for our next door clients is Conversion Amp. And this is the way that that process flows, has a huge impact on how well we convert, uh, not just the lead into the, into the book job, but also the book job into the review, the review into the repeat customer, the repeat customer into the you know, re referral source that refers us to their friends and colleagues. So as you think about conversion, Website, is it built to convert reputation? Do you have those reviews? Do you have that automation firing? And then automation, are you following up with your leads in two minutes or less? And do you have automation happening to convert them at a higher level? Just wanna make sure you've got a salient point there. I'm gonna hit these last three very, very quickly. So when it comes to optimizing results, we've, dr we've driven leads, we've maximized the conversion of those leads. The next thing we have to do is optimize the results, right? And so. First thing usually that we need to do in order to triple off our sales and be in cons consistency to momentum, sometimes we've got to spend a little bit more. Like a lot of next door companies have grown, let's say to 5 million, 6 million, 10 million, and they've got a set budget, $5,000 a month, $6,000 a month. Eventually, if you want to go to the next level, you've got to give a little bit more rocket fuel in order to, to have the juice that you need to get that exposure, to get those leads, to get that momentum. So Usually what we're seeing is to stay stagnant, and I know you guys teach this actively at Nextdoor, you know, you'd be spending somewhere between 5 and 15%. To have accelerated growth, you'd, you'd be taking 15% of your, of your revenue and reinvesting that back into marketing. So sometimes you're not in growth because we're not investing enough in marketing because we don't believe we've got the right source of the right channels to do it. So that's first. Number two, to optimize results, you have to understand what your average cost per lead is, right? You need to know... How much am I spending? How many leads am I generating? What's my average cost per lead? And you want to have confidence in that. And that's why I've showed you a number of examples here. We focus on this as the main metric, which is how much did we spend? How many leads did we generate? What's my average cost per lead? And what's the average cost per lead across those different channels? That gives you the confidence to say, well, if I'm going to spend an additional five grand in my marketing, I need to know that my average cost per lead is making financial sense, that it can monetize and it can you know, generate a return on investment. But the gold standard here for really maximizing your growth is to focus on the actual return on investment, the ROI. How much did I spend and how much revenue did I generate? Um, and, and so we use two different mechanisms for this. For all of our clients, we have benchmark data with projections, right? And so in, in the case of Paul the Plumber here, we can see how many leads they got, what their average conversion rate is, and what the projected revenue was. So it'd be a 22 time return on investment. But that's kind of a guess, right? And there's there's two people famously quoted with saying, half my advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half it was. I know that you can relate to this if you're watching. Um, and that's why I'm really excited about our ROI insights reporting, which 
gives us the ability to take out the guesswork. Um, basically, it matches our leads to the actual booked revenue inside Service Titan, which I know most of you guys use. And we can, we can tell you without any guesswork, here's how many leads came in, here's how many of those matched to customers inside Service Titan, and here's your return on investment. And we can drill down into very specifics on what came from Google ads, what came from local service ads, what came from the retargeting campaigns, you know, and, and down to the channel. Is this HVAC or is it plumbing or is it electrical? And really get granular. And that's where you start to get the confidence to truly optimize the results and say, I'm not guessing. I know where I'm spending the money. I know where I'm getting return on investment and continue to grow and continue to double down on the things that generate the best results. And so we've come full circle. This is the accelerated growth model, how we drive leads, maximize conversion and optimize for results. Nicole, I know I've, I'm right at the bubble here. So I want to check in and see if there's any questions or if we have time for any questions um, based on what we covered. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great presentation. Thanks for sharing with us, Josh. Um, so our first question um, is, what is a good average cost per lead for digital marketing? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think you need to know a couple of things. First of all, you have to have the tracking in place so that you know like how much you spent and how many leads you've generated. We find that in different markets, LA is going to be different than Tupelo, right? Um, and also, what you're charging should be different as well. Uh, but usually for, for plumbing, it's going to be somewhere between $25 and $50 per lead. For um, HVAC, it's going to be somewhere between $30 and $70 per lead. Uh, if you want, reach out to me. I've actually got benchmark data for that where I can show you based on markets where we're seeing what the averages are. It's a great okay. question. Now, next question. Do you have any tips for getting more online reviews? Yeah, so I think the biggest part for generating online reviews, like, you know, definitely we want to drive reviews because it's going to increase our rankings. It's also going to improve our conversions. Number one is baking into the culture of the company. And you guys at Nextstar are so good at this, training your technicians, having them know that every, every week when you do your team huddle, the reviews that were captured are going to be called out. Uh, and then number three is actually just using the automation where after every, every job is closed, bam, the automation fires that's gonna really accelerate the amount of reviews that you get. Okay. Now our next question, what is the best way to get links to increase your rankings? Ooh, okay, so when we're talking about SEO, right? I talked about that briefly. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to get links. First of all, is put out, you know, good content, share your success stories, share your case studies, like the jobs that you guys are doing in the field. Um, one of my favorite strategies is to do competitive link acquisition which is where we do an analysis, like who's ranking number one in your market right now for the keyword we're focused on. Could be your city plumber, could be your city AC repair. They're ranking because they've got certain content on the site and they've got certain signals. A lot of that is how many links do they have? We can use tools like Ahrefs, Search Atlas, um, SEM Rush to look and see what links they have that you don't and do a gap analysis and say, okay, we have to go and get those same or similar links. Um, it's a little bit of a manual process, but when you do that combined with good on-page optimization and good content strategy on a consistent basis, uh, over time, you can absolutely catch up with and outrank even the toughest competitors. Okay. Well, that is all the time we have today. Next star, thanks for listening. This year's webinar series is developed to help you optimize your purchasing power and build efficiencies within your business by leveraging Nextstar strategic partners. You can learn more about plumbing and HVAC SEO and all of our strategic partners by visiting the Nextstar member website and clicking the strategic partners tab. And you can always reach out to your Nextstar rebate coaches, Kelly Riley and Olivia Centers to add any of our strategic partners to your team. And if you have a story to tell, if you've worked with a Nextstar strategic partner and achieved resounding success, please reach out to the strategic partner team at strategicpartners at nextstarnetwork.com. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.